USB-C is a great interface. Being able to plug in a single connection and have all kinds of different functions plugged into it, that's great, plus the fact that it's universal. Today I'm excited to take a look at this Tobin One USB-C laptop docking station stand. We're just going to get right into this. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be taking a look at this Tobin One it's a UBS-031 USB laptop docking station stand. So recently Tobin One reached out to me and said, hey, we've got a lot of different products that your audience may like. Take a look at what we have to offer and see if there's something that you think that your audience may be interested in. So thank you to Tobin One for sending me this docking station and we're gonna take a look at it. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and open this thing up and start looking at the features. So first of all, as I slip this box out of the outer case, I mean, this is just a nice touch. You could just as easily make a white box, an ugly white box with nothing on it, but just a little thank you note in several different languages, apparently. That's just a very nice touch. And I can tell you that all my interaction so far with my representative at Tobin One has been super helpful. So this, this just makes me happy. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what's inside. So first off, very happy to see the interface cable. So this is just a, a simple USB-C to USB-C cable, but a lot of these products, they'll have all the hookups for you, you know, all the connections on the device, but they won't give you the actual cable to do this. So that's, uh, that's a plus right there. Quick start guide, that's gonna be helpful. And then here's the unit itself. And that is sturdy. So you can feel the build quality already. Let's get rid of this box here and unwrap the stand and this thing just looks beautiful already so let's take a look at this thing as we extend it upwards now because it can support so many different sizes and we'll look at that in just a second it's got to be built strong and it's got to be built so that these hinges you know are going to stay in place when you put something heavy on it so you're going to expect that it's going to be have a little resistance to it as you're extending it out and yes you can feel that you know it's not going to collapse when you put a, a big laptop on it and we're going to test it out with several different laptops we're going to test it out with a, a macbook we're going to test it out with a big heavy gaming laptop and then i'm excited also to test this out with an ipad so one thing that you may have noticed just real quickly not only does this extend up and outward it also rotates and it's not a free moving like it's not going to it's not going to rotate if you accidentally bump your laptop but it is easy to rotate. Now I've got this on top of this silly desk pad here so the, the rubber feet on the bottom aren't making perfect contact with the surface. So I may take that away in a second because it is sliding a little bit, but that's just because of the desk mat, not because of the, uh, the unit itself. So I may remove this in just a few minutes. So let's take a look at the hub that's built onto it because that's obviously a very important function to this. You know, the stand is great, but this is really why most people are buying this. And we can see right on the back here, we've got Ethernet, which is going to be gigabit Ethernet. We've got two USB 3 ports. We've got an HDMI port, which is going to be 4K 60 hertz. And that's, that's great. A lot of these hubs, they'll be 4K at 30 hertz. But this one is actually 4K at 60 hertz, so that's great. And then we've got the two USB-C connections. One's going to be for the power delivery in and one's going to be for your interface itself, plugging the cable that we just saw was included with it to your device. Now you also saw how compact this thing folds down into, and this is actually something that you could carry with you in a backpack if you wanted to, but in addition to that, this guy right here actually disconnects completely, and you can carry just this with you if this is all that you need. So you bring your interface cable, you bring this, you bring something to charge with it, and uh, you're good to go. You can carry this in your backpack and have all your functionality on the go. But like I said, you can also carry this. Now it is, it's not super heavy because it's a sturdy aluminum, but it's not the lightest thing in the world. You want it to be heavy enough to hold up to your laptop, but you could still carry that in a backpack. Now this particular model comes with a couple options and one of the options is to have it included with the charger. Now they were nice enough to supply me with the charger and I'm very happy they did because this thing, if you're going to order this, this is a great deal to get it with the charger. 
So this is a 100 watt gallium nitrate charger, USB-C, and it is uh, power delivery 3.0, and it can put out a lot of power for a tiny little device. So it'll do 5 volts, 9 volts, 12 volts, 15 volts, and all the way up to 20 volts at 5 amps. So 100 full watts, and just about anything that you plug into this thing, you're going to be able to power, whether it's a MacBook Pro or most Windows laptops. Now, if you've got a super duper gaming laptop that takes like a 180 watt charger, then obviously you want to have that 180 watt charger with you. But for most laptops that use a USB-C charging, this is going to be great for. And when you're using this charger with the stand, you're not going to just plug this right into your laptop. You're going to plug this into the hub and the hub's going to take up to the 100 watts input and it's going to deliver about 90 watts output to your device. Now it's perfect for MacBook Pros and most Windows laptops getting that 90 watts. It does take a couple watts to obviously power up the hub itself and all the ports that are in there and that allows those USB ports to deliver out power if they need to. So let's go ahead and take this and get a laptop hooked up to it and test it out. Alright so starting off I've got a MacBook Air plugged in here and I'll show you the connections in just a second. It makes it easy to make the connections because you can actually pop that thing off, make all your connections, and then pop it back on. Or you can just rotate the thing around, make any connection that you need to, and then rotate it back. So let's take a look at what I've got in here. I've got this red cable here, which is the Ethernet cable. I've got a little tiny dongle in here, which is a USB-C dongle for a wireless mouse and keyboard. I've got a basically a thumb drive, so an external drive enclosure that's plugged into the other USB-C port. I don't have a monitor plugged in yet, we'll do that in just a second. And I've got the host cable which came with it, and the build quality on this host cable is great. So that's going from here right to the laptop, and then here's the power input coming from that 100 watt charger that came with it. So we've got all the connections made. You can see I can turn this thing around pretty easily without anything slipping around, and then I can lift the lid on this thing and we are ready to work. So without the monitor, without the mouse and keyboard yet, you can adjust this stand to whatever height that you want and just make it ready to go, you know, just like this. So you can have all your connections made, use this just as a laptop stand, and then you can actually work on it and you can adjust the height and the, the angle and everything any way that you want fairly easily so that the monitor is at the right height for you, the keyboard's at the right height for you, everything's at the right angle, and you can work just like this. Do all your work. When you're done, unplug this one cable right here and take this with you. Now, another beautiful thing about this is where is my MacBook supplied charger? Well, it's I don't have to plug it in and out of my desk all day long. That's still in my backpack. So this cable here is going to take care of all my charging and my interface while I'm working. Unplug that, throw this in the bag. Now I'm going home or going to work or going to the library, wherever I'm going and I've already got my charger there. So if I want to just leave this as a true docking station in one place, have everything pre-wired to it, make one connection, then that's what these things are really great for. Now in addition to how this is set up, I did say I had that wireless mouse and keyboard plugged in. So if I wanted to even go for the full-size keyboard, or this is not quite full-size, but it is a portable keyboard, then I can include this into the setup and then and add the mouse to that same setup and now with that one little dongle back there it's already plugged in that's going to stay right here at the desk with this stand and with this mouse and keyboard now I'm ready to go now I can do whatever I need to do and I personally like this setup because sometimes you want a full keyboard and sometimes you want the ability to go ahead and use this trackpad because of all the different gestures that it's got so this is a pretty good setup for me now while I've got this all hooked up let's go ahead and test out the speed Here's my USB 3 drive that I've got plugged in there, and this is an 11 gig file, um, one of my older videos that are on the channel. So let's go ahead and just copy this from the desktop, paste it onto the external drive, and this is going through the docking station, and it shows 11.53 gigabytes less than a minute. So without doing any kind of super duper speed tests, I am going to just tell you that we're not losing any speed through this hub. Those USB 3 ports in the back there are rated up to 5 gigabits per second. 
and just like that the things already copied over so now I can copy my files from whatever my drives are here at work unplug the cable take the thing back on the go with me so the next step for this setup is to go ahead and set up the monitor all right so first up I've got my MacBook Air here hooked up to an external monitor and this is a 4k monitor uh, but it's just a little 15 inch portable monitor just because I've got enough stuff on the desk already but um, apologize for the cable management if this was going to be a permanent display obviously we would clean this up and it would look a lot nicer but as you know I'm hooking up things and disconnecting things all day long so I'm gonna get a little lazy right here but let's take a look at how this is working so the first setup I have right here is having an extended display so I've got my main display over here and then over on the external display I've got the option of setting up this external display as whatever resolution I want now right now it's set for 1080p that's just because it's a tiny monitor it's only 15 inches but we can go ahead and bring this thing up to full 4k now obviously the text got really small and everything got really small but I know you can't read it but the refresh rate here is set to 60 Hertz so that won't allow you to do that if this wasn't capable of coming out that port at 4k 60 so that's that's pretty nice now it's not like we're gonna be gaming on this uh, MacBook Air but it is nice just to have the refresh rate so that you're not staggering or stuttering windows and everything over here as you're doing your work so let's set that back up to 1080p just so we can see it again and the other option we can do is we can come back over here and set this up as a mirrored display and now we can tell the monitor what we want it optimized for we're going to optimize it for the external display because at this point we could close down the lid have our external mouse and keyboard and be doing everything right here on this display now obviously this wouldn't be the ideal setup for that for this type of setup you would have a really nice maybe 28 inch 4k display or something sitting on your desk or maybe an ultra wide display sitting on your desk and then you have this thing closed up you're using your mouse and keyboard and you're working just like you're got a, a regular desktop computer on there and then same thing once you're done unplug the single cable and out you go because all this stuff is already you know plugged into the wall for power plugged into the docking station for the HDMI and you've got a one cable connection to get you in and out the door now I've used a lot of these different types of docking stations over the years and sometimes you have to kind of fiddle with them to get them to work and this one I plugged the cable in plugged the HDMI cable in gave the same power and it just knew automatically it knew what kind of monitor it was it knew what the ref refresh rate was and it just worked and you got to remember that this MacBook Air here is notorious for having very little connections right it's got USB-C on the side here and that's about it there's no you know external display connection or anything you have to buy dongles for everything you know if you go ahead and buy a dongle for your Ethernet and a dongle for a USB-A and a dongle for your HDMI output you know you've already paid for a really nice docking station by the time you've bought two or three dongles for this thing so having a one single cable going to that dock plus having a nice stand it's a no-brainer for this type of setup so next up let's go ahead and grab a Windows PC and see if it works just as easily all right next up I've got a little Windows laptop here this is a Huawei Matebook just an ultra portable very similar to a MacBook Air but for Windows and you can see right away I've got this thing extended so here's my primary display here and then there's the external one and if we look we can set the external one to be whatever resolution we want in this case it's set for full 4k and yeah this is so this is extended now we can also go ahead and just like on the other one we can set this to duplicate so that we're mirroring the output now because this matebook is a 3 by 2 aspect ratio and this is obviously a 16 by 9 uh, 4k display you're gonna see the bars on the side there that's just a matter mirroring this display onto here it has nothing to do with the docking station so let's go ahead and come back to extend and like I said we're ready to work uh, and all I did to do this was unplug this from the MacBook Air plugged it into here and the thing was just working so let's go ahead and grab a beefier laptop and see how that works all right take a look at this beefy boy here this is a Dell G7 17 inch gaming laptop and like I said you're not going to be powering this uh, through this hub you're probably going to use your own big old brick that comes with it 
but you can hook up you know the USB-C cable here and I've got this plugged into a Thunderbolt port and you can see that it's ex extending the display over here now this thing is so heavy and so big you can't even see the whole thing in the, in the picture here but this is about seven and a quarter pounds I think the website said and you can see it's standing up now depending on the angle of your screen and everything if you get the weight just right it may start pushing the the stand down but how it is right now it's staying just fine I don't know if I would use this up in the air like this to actually type on I would probably bring it down but I just wanted to extend it up just to show you the strength of the stand itself so now that we've shown that it can hold up to a 17 inch big old fat book here let's go ahead and do some other cool stuff with it all right so maybe the workday is done or maybe you're on a lunch break or something you want to get a little bit of gaming in well, all I did was unplug this from my laptop, just a single cable, plugged it into a Steam Deck, and as you can see, I've got it coming right up on the display over here. Now, I've just got a 8-bit Do Ultimate Wired controller, which I just did a review on. You can check that out on the channel. And I've just got, the, got that plugged into one of the USB ports in the back. And as you can see on the screen over there, everything works right away. Again, single cable plugged in here. I've got my display over there, I've got my controller, I've even got mouse and keyboard still hooked up if I need to do anything in the uh, maintenance of the Steam Deck itself or whatever type of portable gaming system you have. And we're ready to go, we're ready to game. So that's just a bonus. That's just one of the nice things about having a universal docking station that you can plug into multiple devices. All right, and last but not least, I wanted to test out a iPad Pro. Now, this is obviously a USB-C model, so the iPad Pros, the uh, iPad Mini Model 6 has the USB-C, and then some of the newer iPads, you know, the most recent year, iPad 9 or whatever it is, has USB-C on it. And, of course, the, the new iPhones do, too, so this would probably work with that. But you can see I've got this set up. It's mirroring display. You can either mirror it or extend it. I don't use uh, this aspect of using an iPad Pro with a docking station to actually use mouse and keyboard, but it does work. Um, but I've got something that I do use this type of setup for every single day, and that's what I'm most excited to show you. So every now and then in the videos, I explain how I have my whole setup here for recording, and basically I've got an iPad Pro right here. So I've got an iPad Pro using as the camera, and it's a 4K camera. It does great video. It makes it very easy to edit. I edit right on the iPad. I don't have to copy files back and forth to computers. And I love it. Now how I have it set up is I do have a USB-C cable plugged in right over here going to a docking station right down here. And I've got the iPad standing on a stand right here also. Now I'll superimpose a picture of this conglomeration of a weird setup right here so you can see it. And it is a functional setup but I've really just kind of rigged this thing together and it's always kind of fallen apart, um, but, but it works for me. Now, why I'm excited about this is I'll be able to use this stand with its built-in hub and a one single cable hooked up here, have my microphone set up, have my drives for my transferring of files set up back here, and everything's gonna be all in one nice clean little place, um, not kind of rigged together. So I know this particular setup that I'm talking about now isn't something that everybody's going to use but for me setting up my camera or my iPad to work in this space here is going to be awesome. The included charger will keep the iPad charged. The setups in the back are going to give me access to the internet and to my microphone and all my storage. Now one more thing I forgot to mention when we had the laptops up in here. little design feature that actually works out to be great is the fact that the stand here has all this area cut out now that saves weight on the unit itself, of course, if you're going to carry this thing around. But it also allows all the vents in the back of your laptop, if you have fans that blow out the back, especially on those gaming laptops, it's going to allow them to vent their air out without being blocked. If you just had this thing completely closed in and you had a heavy laptop that's blowing hot air onto it, this thing would act as a heat sink, so it would cool a little bit, but it wouldn't cool near as much as if you had these cutouts in here. So that's a nice little design feature. So to summarize what we've got, we've got a really nice heavy-duty stand with a nice rotating base, a built-in docking station hub here with all the ins and outs that you would need for everyday use. 
get a nice high quality stand that's going to keep your device in its place and it's going to keep it cool. It's going to hold the weight of most every laptop you could throw at it. And if you go with the option of the charger, you're going to have a great 100 watt charger, which is, after I looked at the specs, it is going to deliver 87 watts out to the host device. So 87 is an important number because that's what the modern big MacBook Pros need. And you get all this in a small little compact, portable if you need to, but sturdy on your desk if you don't. So thank you again to Tobin1 for sending this out to me to review. As always, all my reviews are my opinions. I let them know up front that I'm going to record the whole video featuring their product, reviewing their product, without their direct editing or input on what I say, and hopefully they're very pleased with my review. So if you want to check this guy out, I'm going to leave a link down in the description below where you can go and find it and purchase it. If you have any questions on it, please go ahead and go down in the comments and let me know and I'll answer any question I can. If this review is helpful to you, then I appreciate a thumbs up. If you want to see more stuff like this, more reviews, and more tech nonsense, go ahead and hit that subscribe button too. But I thank you as always for watching, and until next time, peace out and geek out.